Singapore is fully committed to doing our part in this global movement to tackle climate change. But unlike many other countries, we are highly disadvantaged by a lack of natural renewable energy sources. We do not have huge rivers or hot springs to draw hydro or geothermal power. We do not have the land for wind or solar energy to be sufficient for our own needs. But thankfully, green technologies have been improving by leaps and bounds. Alternative low-carbon solutions like carbon capture, utilisation and storage and hydrogen are starting to look more plausible. Singapore takes these commitments very seriously. We are on track to achieving our 2030 target. We have since reviewed our longer-term plans. With advances in technology and new opportunities for inter international collaboration in areas like carbon markets, we believe we can bring forward our net zero timeline. We will therefore raise our ambition to achieve net zero emissions by or around mid-century. We will consult closely with industry and citizen stakeholder groups to firm up and finalise our plans before making a formal revision of our LEDS later this year. To achieve this net zero ambition, we will need to set the right price of carbon so that businesses and individuals will be able to internalise the cost of carbon and take actions to moderate their emissions. When we introduced the carbon tax in 2019, we kept the initial tax low at $5 per tonne of emissions to give businesses time to adjust, to move decisively to achieve our new net zero ambition we will need a higher carbon tax. I will therefore raise our carbon tax to $25 per tonne in 2024 and 2025, and $45 per tonne in 2026 and 2027, with a view to reaching $50 to $80 per tonne by 2030. The current tax of $5 per tonne will remain, will remain unchanged until 2023, as previously stated. And we are pacing the increases to the carbon tax between now and 2030 and will announce subsequent increases ahead of time. This will provide certainty for businesses. Besides this, we will not impose an additional carbon tax on the use of petrol, diesel and compressed natural gas. These already have excise duties that encourage users to moderate their fuel consumption and hence emissions. We will continue to review and adjust these fuel excise duties periodically. I appreciate that some businesses and households may require support as they adjust to the carbon tax increase. For example, we are mindful that firms in our emissions intensive and trade exposed sectors may face higher costs than those in countries with lower or no carbon tax. Some will need a little more time to make the necessary reduction in emissions or investment in cleaner technologies. So to support such firms and manage the near-term impact on their competitiveness, we will put in place a transition framework. Such transition frameworks are found in many countries with carbon taxes. They provide existing companies with allowances for a share of their emissions. For our framework, the, emissions, the allowances will be determined based on efficiency standards and decarbonisation targets. This will help mitigate the impact on business costs while still encouraging decarbonisation. We will continue to engage affected companies on the design of the framework prior to its implementation in 2024. From 2024, we will also allow businesses to use high-quality international carbon credits to offset up to 5% of their taxable emissions in lieu of paying carbon tax. This will moderate the impact for companies. It will also help create local demand for high-quality carbon credits and catalyze the development of well-functioning and regulated carbon markets. We will also do more to support companies, especially SMEs, to invest in energy-efficient equipment and decarbonisation solutions. 
For households, the higher carbon tax will be felt mainly through an increase in utility bills. At $25 per tonne, this would translate to an increase of about $4 per month in the utility bills for an average four-room HDB household. We will provide support, such as additional USAFE rebates, to help cushion the impact during the transition.